This is the rear brake master cylinder assembly from a 1983 R100 RS. I'm going to take it apart and see what condition everything's in. I know already that the hose here is frayed that goes to the fluid reservoir. So I'm going to take a Dremel tool and cut off that clamp and then I'll get a new hose and put all that back together. To get into the master cylinder, there's a uh, little C-clip right here and another one on the other side. I'll get those off and then the lever assembly can be removed. And then that will expose the plunger inside here, which goes inside the master cylinder. And that's what's pushing fluid when you press the rear brake. So I'll be able to extract that and then inspect the bore of the master cylinder to see what condition it's in. So I uh, used my Dremel tool and cut through the edge of that clamp and then I could take a screwdriver, just open it up, <clears throat> and then it slid right off the nipple here. So getting that off of there is real easy. To remove the little C-clip, I'm just going to use two screwdrivers to press on the open ends here and force them up off the pin. There it goes. And then that slides right on out of there like that. So it's a very small little circlet that holds that pin on. And then I should be able to just get the pin to drive right out of here. So I'm going to use a drift and a hammer and drive this pin on out so I can get the linkage loose. It should move fairly easily. Yeah, there it goes. Yep, pops right out. Might have to tap it a few more times. And then this whole piece comes right on out. So then I'll be able to get to the insides of the master cylinder. So a suggested method to remove the master cylinder piston is to use a little compressed air from the brake line end of the cylinder and try to blow it out. So we'll find out if anything like that even works. Well, I'd say that doesn't do any good at all. So the other method that's discussed is using a small drill bit. So it'll fit through the little orifice at the end here that the brake fluid goes through. So I think a 332nd is going to go in just fine. So you push it through that hole and then I just give it a couple of wraps. There we go. And what happens is the whole assembly comes out, slides out, actually. Here we go. When I removed the piston from the cylinder, the spring was in good condition and so was the piston. There wasn't any rust. So I'm going to polish up the inside of the master cylinder. When I inspected the inside of the rear master cylinder, there wasn't any rust, so that's a good thing. And I didn't see any pits, so it's reusable. That said, I like to polish it up just a little bit. And what I do for that is I use a half inch drill bit with some 600 wet dry paper. And then I tape that to the drill bit and make sure the end of the bit is inside uh, fairly far so that when I put it inside the bore that won't uh, butt up against the back edge and gouge it. So I tend to just bend this over a little bit so it'll fit inside the bore and then thread the master cylinder onto the paper like that and then 
just run it a little bit. And uh, then I clean it out, but what will happen after you've done that is it'll have an almost mirror-like finish, which uh, means it'll be a good seal uh, when I put the new uh, piston with seals in. This is the rear master cylinder rebuild kit that I got from Euro Moto Electrics. It includes a new return spring, a new piston, with two seals already installed and also the parts that go onto the front seal and lubricating grease for the seals to keep them pliable. The piston has a larger diameter and a smaller diameter end. The larger diameter end is the end that the front seal fits on. The seal itself has two faces. One has the lettering, including Brembo, and a slightly dished center. The other face is flat. The stiffening ring has a flare on one end and a rounded edge, and then a flat edge on the other side. The stiffening ring goes on the seal on the flat side and then the flared end slides over that and butts up against the lip of the seal. So the flat edge of the stiffening ring faces you on the flat face of the seal. To install it, the flat washer goes first up against the face of the piston and then the seal with the stiffening ring has the lettering that faces the flat washer like that. And then the spring slides on like that. And then this whole assembly is pushed inside the master cylinder. So it's an easy kit to assemble and it should be fairly simple to install. I am getting ready to assemble the rear master cylinder. I spray painted it with black gloss caliper paint and I let that set up for seven days so it'll get good and hard and I also spray painted the lever arm. Sometimes I like to bake this in an oven at about 200 to 220 degrees for 30 minutes just to get it good and hard but the brake pipe here for the hose out of the fluid reservoir looks to be plastic so I don't want to do that. I'm just going to allow it to sit for those seven days and call it good. The new rubber boot will fit on the end here and this is the original pin and then I got a couple of new uh, flat washers and I'm going to use the original Eclipse to secure the pin and that pin and lever are what hold the master cylinder piston inside. The other thing I'm doing is soaking the piston and its seals and the front seal in DOT4 brake fluid for about 10 minutes just to season them and that should make it easier to slide this into the bore and prevent tearing up the seals. Also to assist with that I'm going to use the grease that was included in the rebuild kit. I'm going to liberally apply that to the seals and some to the inside of the master cylinder bore. So I'm ready to assemble everything. I put a lot of the grease here on the piston so the seals have quite a lot of it and I also put some on the front assembly and then this is the spring so I took a little bit of the grease on my pinky and I could get it inside the bore so I think everything's pretty greased up. I'm just going to slide the spring in then run the piston in small and down then the flat washer and then the Brembo lettered side of the front seal goes on like that. And then we just kind of push on it. And everybody wants to go in nicely. Just like that. The next thing is the lever assembly is going to go on like this. Over the top of the piston to hold everything in. 
See if I can show that a little better here. Yeah, just like that. So I used a little Rugelide that I keep in this bottle. It's sort of a rubber lubricant. And I want that to make it a little easier to slide this up and over the assembly. Before I insert that lever arm and the pin, I use some brake grease and put it inside the bushing of the pin to keep it well lubricated. Anyhow, first things first, I need to get this in and the pin. I push in on the piston so I can get the end of the lever over it. Now maybe if I put the pin in like that, slide this in, and get everything to line up. <clears throat> so the best way to get this rubber cover on is to take this end and slide it over the lever and then use a pair of needle nose pliers to grab it from the back and you can slide it over the pin and onto the body and it'll line up eventually. You'll get a pucker or two, but there it goes. And there's the cover now, sealing this to keep all the water and dirt out. So now all I have to do is uh, slide the flat washers in like that, and then take the uh, Eclipse and slide them into the groove And this is where they'll go flying, as is always the case when you have to use some force, but I think I can just snap them in here just like that. And then of course you do the same on the other side. So that has the lever in and the master cylinder piston in. So basically it's uh, rebuilt on the inside.